What does KJV 1611 historical scriptures say? Thoughtful face. Genesis 12 1 to 20 KJV 1611. 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. 4. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. 5. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. 6. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. 8. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and high on the east, and there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. 9. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. 10. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. 11. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. 12. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. 13. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. 14. And it came to pass, that, when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. 15. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. 16. And he entreated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants, and she asses and camels. 17. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai Abram's wife. 18. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? 19. Why saidst thou, She is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife, now therefore behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. 20. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. What does KJV 1611 historical scriptures say? Thoughtful face, Genesis 24 1-7 KJV 1611 1. And Abraham was old, and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. 3. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. 4. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. 5. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land, must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? 6. And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. 7. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that soiree unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. What does KJV 1611 historical scriptures say? Thoughtful face. Genesis 37 23 to 36 KJV 1611. 23 And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat his coat of many colors that was on him. 24 And they took him, and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. 25 And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and, behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. 26 And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother, and conceal his blood? 27 
Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. And his brethren were content. 28 Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. 29 And Reuben returned unto the pit, and, behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. 30 And he returned unto his brethren, and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? 31 And they took Joseph's coat, and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the coat in the blood. 32 And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father, and said, This have we found, know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. 33 And he knew it, and said, It is my son's coat, an evil beast hath devoured him, Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. 34 And Jacob rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for his son many days. 35 And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. 36 And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and captain of the guard. What does KJV 16:11 historical scriptures say? Thoughtful face. Psalm 83 1-18 KJV 16:11. 1. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. 2. 4. Lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. 4. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. 5. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. 6. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites, of Moab, and the Hagarines. 7. Gabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. 8. Asur also is joined with them, they have halpen the children of Lot. Selah. 9. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kisan, 10, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. 11. Make their nobles like Oreb, and like Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba, and as Elmanah, 12, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. 13. O my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind. 14. As the fire burneth the wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. 15. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. 16. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. 17. Let them be confounded and troubled for ever, yea, let them be put to shame, and perish. 18. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Y Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. What does KJV 16:11 historical scripture say? Thoughtful face. Acts 7 2 to 46, 47 to 60 KJV 1611. 2 And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Haran. 3 And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. 4 Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Haran, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. 5. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, and it was seed after him, when as yet he had no child. 6. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. 7. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God, and after that shall they come forth, and serve me in this place. 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begat Isaac, and circumcised him the eighth day, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. 9. And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. 10. And delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. 11. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Chanan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. 12. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. 
13. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. 14. Then sent Joseph, and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. 15. So Jacob went down into Egypt, and died, he and our fathers, sixteen, and were carried over into Sychem, and laid in the sepulchre that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emmer the father of Sychem. 17. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, 18, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. 19. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children, to the end they might not live. 20. Which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months, 21. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, and nourished him for her own son. 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. 23. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren the children of Israel. 24. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. 25. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. 26. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? 27. But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? 28. Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? 29. Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. 30. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. 31. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, 32, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. 33. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. 34. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. 35. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. 36. He brought them out, after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. 37. This is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear. 38. This is he, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sina, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us, 39. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, 40. Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. 41. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. 42. Then God turned, and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. 44. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. 45. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with, Joshua, Yahashua into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers, unto the days of David. 46. Who found favor before Yah and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. 47. But Solomon built him an house. 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. 49. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool, what house will ye build me? Saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? 50. Hath not my hand made all these things? 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, 
ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, 53, who have received a law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of Yah, and, Joshua, Yahashua standing on the right hand of Yah, 56, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Yah. 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, 58, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Yah, and saying, Lord, Joshua, Yahashua, receive my spirit. 60. And he kneeled down, and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Which you and your tongue called the pillars of Hercules. And this island was larger than Libya and Asia put together. And there was a passage hence for travelers of that day to the rest of the islands, as well as from those islands to the whole opposite continent that surrounds the real sea, right? That's the Pacific they're talking about. And this Atlantic island then was formed a powerful league of kings who subdued the entire island, together with many others in parts also of the continent, besides which they subjected to their rule the inland parts of Libya, as far as Egypt and Europe, also as far as Tarhenia. Subsequently, through violent earthquakes and deluges which brought destruction in a single day and night, the whole of your warlike race was merged under the earth, and the Atlantic Iceland itself was plunged beneath the sea and entirely disappeared, when even now that sea is neither navigable nor to be traced out, being blocked up by the great depths of mud which the subsiding island produced. Alright, so that again, that was the famous Atlantis story. This quotation proves that the Egyptians knew America as the Atlantic Isle. Alright, I've been telling you that. Plato says that the Atlantic Sea was navigable 9,000 years before his time, so that there must have been navigation across the Atlantic Ocean in the mythic ages. The features of the passage are exceedingly clear. The island was larger than Libya and Asia put together. That may be put roughly at 8,000 miles across, all right? Bigger than North Africa and Asia. Asia is Europe and Asia, all right? It's bigger, so America is a continent. It was reached by travelers who first landed on islands before they arrived on the mainland. That is plain enough, right? The Caribbean and all that. They, like Columbus, reached the West India Islands first. The cause of the destruction mentioned was earthquakes. This points to the volcanic regions of Central America and the Andes, where such disasters have occurred in modern times with melancholy frequency. The invasion of Africa and Europe referred to constitutes a very large portion of the mythology of all nations, and in later chapters it will be worked out in detail, throwing light on all the obscurities of history. This is the comment. Now a little argumentation is necessary. And he says, learned men generally have adopted the theory that this Atlantic Isle must be some island between the two hemispheres that has actually sunk. But the theory will not admit of the slightest examination. In the first place, it is absolutely contrary to the nature of things and therefore impossible. What is an island? An island has no independent existence. It is simply an outlying part of a continent, all right? Like, like the top of mountains, right? So it's really connected still. It's just sticking out, right? That's what an island is. He's just saying it's just part of a mountain that's sticking out. It's still part of another continent. So depressed at its size that water flows around it. England, for instance, is part of the continent of Europe with a shallow channel, right? So England is still connected to Europe. It's not just, it's not an island, right? That's what he's letting you know. But England is just as much as a part of America as it is of France, okay? It's still connected to America too. It's just water in between, right? The waters of the Atlantic are, comparatively speaking, a small quantity of water lying in a depression of the vast crust of the earth. To talk, therefore, of an island sinking is to talk of an island sinking not into the water, but into the crust of the earth, that is to say, into itself, which is absurd. But in the second place, if an island could sink at all, this Atlantic isle could not possibly sink in the Atlantic Ocean. 
Learned men who believe in the sunken island could never have measured distances. They must have jumped to conclusions without a thought. Let the Atlantic Ocean be computed at 4,000 miles across. All right, pay attention to what he's going to say. Because remember, Plato described how big Atlantis was. So if it was that big, how could it, just, how could it sink on the Atlantic when the Atlantic is not even that big? So listen to what he says. It says, let the Atlantic Ocean be computed at 4,000 miles across. The quotation makes the island some 8,000. How, therefore, in the name of foot rules and yardsticks, could an island 8,000 miles wide exist at all and an ocean only 4,000 miles wide? To say nothing of sinking. The theory may be dispatched as a joke or as an illustration of the trick of putting a shilling into a sixpenny piece. Yet upon this extraordinary blunder, the histories of the human race are written. I've been trying to explain that to everybody. It's clearly described as bigger than Asia and Libya. All right. Bigger than the Atlantic Ocean itself. So how could it be in the Atlantic Ocean? All right. That was just Parts of it went down, parts of it as the oceans rose. While the histories of America are revealed or supposed to have been lost, those of Africa, Europe, and Asia have been overloaded with what does not belong to them. Oh, I'm going to repeat that again. All right, Amaru Khans, listen up. While your history of America are revealed or supposed to have been lost, those of Africa, all right, Pan Africanism, Europe, and Asia have been overloaded with what does not belong to them. It does not belong to them. In 2007, when I'd gone to Dominican Republic, uh, big ups to my uh, my Dominican family, uh, Madre and Vicky, uh, a family that we were staying with down there because I was down there on some spiritual business. Uh, young girl by the name of Catherine, she's the first one I ever heard in my life come out of her mouth saying that the Moors are the original peoples of the Americas and that they own the land. Well... My mouth fell on the ground back in 2007 when I heard that, but I still couldn't make the connection of Indian and more. So uh, when I had joined the temple back in like January 2008, Moore Science Temple number 19, I had a brief stand in the temple. After that, I had to, you know, leave and find out truths and things on my own. But the grand governor, Heru Ranisiel, was very uh, uh, implementive in building on that of what the young child Catherine had told me in the Dominican Republic and he showed me the truth of the matter but here's something I want to share with y'all and it's right here it says uh of course this is from the book ancient and modern Britain is page 374 and it says uh still this does not show these people to us in a stronger light than that in which they are placed by 19th century writers this tells us that England was overrun last century by large companies of marauders who soared upon the agricultural castes of England much as they did in Ireland and Scotland to the great terror of these agriculturalists. 
and these oppressors were black oppressors like those of the Welsh Mabinogian, Mabinogian, whatever that is, Mabinogian, that's how it looks like it's pronounced. The Englishmen who had colonized the western shores of the Atlantic not more than a generation or two before Gross spoke of the Indians there as being as black as gypsies. In 1676, the native races of New England were spoken of indifferently as Indians and Moors. And our British Indians are also remembered as Moors. Therefore, Gross is virtually telling us that large companies of Moors or black people roamed up and down the country rather more than a hundred years ago taking very considerable contributions from the farming classes and others besides being possessed of many fierce and aggressive qualities and these moors at that quite recent period had not relinquished the custom that distinguished those black people against whom caesar fought those 18th century moors were also painted people so this right here is telling you that Indians are Moors. They're one and the same. And I give thanks to Catherine, 2007, for that knowledge she had imparted to me. A child at the time, I was 36 years old, and out the mouth of babes sprang forth the truth. And I also give thanks to Grand Governor Heru Rodney Ciel during my time in the temple for bringing this to light, and Indian and Moors are one and the same, and uh, as well as uh, Prince Elimus Uriel Bay of the Kingdom of Admortium. So people, stop arguing back and forth. This, this stuff is historically recorded. It's well over four and 500 years old. The Indians and Moors are the same people. The treaty applies. Morocco was over here. Go and look up the 5th century Connecticut church, 5th century church in Connecticut, Cucaponsi Forest, Connecticut, put there by Moroccan Moors. The landmark is over in, in uh, Hajj Mamoun, uh, Rock in Fickwig, Morocco. Also, go and look at the Bourne Stone in Kamasakum County, Cape Cod Bay, Massachusetts, uh, written in Punic Iberian, uh, which is actually... Uh, Phoenician, Canaanite, uh, Carthaginian uh, writing. They're the same people. The land claim, uh, proclamation of annexation, do not deface. With this, handle takes possession. Just go and read it for yourself. Uh, not only that, uh, read the book, Phoenician Origins of Britons, Scots, and Anglo-Saxons. It tells you that in the syllabarian phonology of the Amaru, uh, who were uh, predecessors of the Canaanites and Phoenicians or, you know, a composite of those people, the Canaanite, that in their language they called themselves more. And it was spelled of various different ways, M-U-R, M-O-R. So go and read this stuff for yourself. It's right here. Uh, the empire's tied together. There's more than enough historical proof and more, more than, you know, 400 years of uh, <laughs> research, you know, Five, more than four and five hundred years of research showing this stuff. So with that, hey, I'm out. Peace and love, Ashe.